Welcome back. Today's topic is the law of conservation of momentum. It's the second big conservation law that we study this year, and it's very important. All conservation laws are very important. In fact, when Einstein was doing his work on the theory of relativity, of general relativity, the one law that he would not abandon, abandon in his work was the law of conservation of momentum. So, if Einstein thought it was important, I guess I do too. Let's get started. So, just like with conservation of energy, conservation of momentum essentially means the momentum you have in the beginning is equal to the momentum you have at the end, unless there is something from outside your system that is exerting an external force. So if that external force is zero, then the vector sum, yes, momentum is a vector, the vector sum of the momentums of the objects in the system will remain constant. Or in mathy look, the sum of the momentum before equals the sum of the momentum after. Okay, so here's a quick sample problem uh, to get us into this mindset of what momentum before and momentum after is all about. So I'm going to start out by writing the equation. Okay, so momentum before is equal to momentum after. So little prime sy symbol means after. Okay, so that would mean that would mean that momentum before, which is m1 v1 plus m2 v2, is equal to m1 v1 prime velocity after plus m2 v2 prime. Long equation. I'm going to say it many times and it'll be very long every time I say it. I'm sorry. Okay, one of the things that we're going to assume is that the mass of our objects doesn't change. It doesn't have to be that way. Mass of the objects can change, uh, but in this case, pretty safe to say that the man isn't going to change his mass a whole lot as he's walking uh, through the canoe. Okay, so momentum before. Let's say the man is mass 1 and the canoe is mass 2. Okay, so we have 75 times V1. Well, if he's sitting in the back and the canoe is at rest, each of their velocities is going to be 0 at the beginning. Okay, at the end, mass 1, the man still has a mass of 75, and he's moving forward. And I'm going to say forward is a positive value. He's moving forward at 0.5 meters per second. And the canoe still has a mass of 120 kilograms. And we want to find out what the canoe is doing relative to the shore. Okay, so that's V2 prime. Well, over on the left-hand side, we have the initial momentum is zero. Well, that means that the initial momentum, or the final momentum, also has to be zero. Whoa, I have numbers here. How can it possibly be zero? Well, let's see. So 0.5 times 75 is 37.5 plus 120 V2 prime. Okay, I need to solve for V2, so that means I need to get um, V2 on one side and everything else on the other. So I have a negative 37.5 is equal to 120 V2 prime which means that V2 prime is equal to negative 37.5, okay, 5, not 7, over 120. Now let's pull up the handy-dandy calculator. for a negative 0.31 meters per second. So that negative sign tells us the direction of the velocity. It means that the canoe is going to the left or backwards relative to the shore. Man's going forward. Well, this makes sense. If you walk in a canoe uh, on the water, the canoe is going to go one way while you go the other way. 
Yeah, makes sense. Next up. Okay, so this momentum stuff, it's conserved unless there are external forces. Okay, so a quick review. External forces are forces that come from outside of the system. Okay, and those external forces are exerting a impulse or an, Im an impulse, and that changes the momentum of the system. Internal forces are those forces arising from the interaction of the particles within the system. Okay, so when the man was walking on the canoe, yes, the man is exerting a force on the canoe, the canoe is exerting a force on the man. Both of those objects are inside the system, the canoe and the man. So those are internal forces. If we were really being picky, we could say that the water is exerting an external force, but it's so small, it's negligible. It's not worth considering. Okay, so in golf, if you're hitting a golf ball and the golf ball is the system, when the club head hits the golf ball, the club head is outside of the system of the golf ball and the club head is exerting an impulse which is going to change the golf ball's momentum. That makes sense. The golf ball goes from a velocity of zero to a velocity of a lot. Now in pool, the uh, system is the two balls, the seven ball and the eight ball, and the seven ball smacks into the eight ball and the eight ball takes off. Okay, The force between the seven and the eight and the eight and the seven are internal to the system of the seven and eight ball. So in this case, there is no change of momentum of the system. The system's momentum remains constant. So one class of interactions that we have is an explosion. It's when you have a single object that suddenly, an explosion is when a single object separates suddenly into more than one object. And all of those forces are internal. It's the explosion. The, the force is inside the original object and it makes all the other parts, all the parts move away from the center. Momentum is conserved. There's an increase in kinetic energy. We go from zero speed to a lot of speed. Okay, and kinetic energy is scalar, so the direction doesn't matter. It all adds together. And that happens that kinetic en energy comes from a conversion of chemical potential energy into kinetic energy. Recoil. This is a type of ex uh, explosion. It's a, an effect of the explosion. Uh, guns and cannons recoil. That means the cannon or the gun must move backward if the projectile is to go forward. If we have a cannon and a cannonball that have the same mass, the cannon is just as good of a projectile as the cannonball. That's why cannons are so heavy compared to the cannonball, because we don't want our cannon to go flying backwards as fast as our cannonball flies forwards. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, here's your multiple choice question. Okay, now here's a sample problem. This is an explosion. We have an exploding object breaking into three fragments. We have a two kilogram fragment that travels north at 200 meters per second. We have a four kilogram fragrant fragment that travels east at 100 meters per second. And then we have this third fragment that has a mass of three kilograms. What is the magnitude and direction of its velocity? So let's draw a picture. This is a vector problem. No lying there. It's a vector problem. Okay, so we have our first object is 2 kilograms and it travels north at 200. Okay, so that's our first object. Our second object is 4 kilograms and travels east at 100. These two vectors have to add up to zero. When we're doing forces, we call that, re that vector the equilibrant, the vector that brings it back into equilibrium. We're not really talking about uh, equilibrium at this point, so we won't call it an equilibrant, but it's going to be something 
like that. Okay, so this is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the pink vector. Okay, so the momentum of the northbound one is equal to mass times velocity, which is 2 times 200, or 400 kilograms meters per second, and that's in the north direction. Okay, the one going east, P2, is equal to 4 kilograms at 400. I'm sorry, 4 kilograms at 100. Have to learn how to talk. Equals 400 kilograms meters per second. Well, what is this one? Okay, well, if we do this the way that we, you know, using conservation momentum, the momentum before is zero. The momentum after also has to be zero, but that's going to be P1 plus P2 plus P3. We know that P1 is 400, and it's in the positive x direction. Okay, and I'm going to denote that with this little symbol here, i hat, means it's 400. Well, let's try that again. It's 400 in the north direction. North direction is j. Okay, plus p2, which is 400 in the x direction, plus p3 has to equal 0. Well, how can p3 equal 0? Well, we're just going to do this addition. P3 must equal to negative 400 I plus or minus, they're both going to be minus, minus 400. And if you haven't seen this notation before, it's, it's a fancy way of saying the x direction and the y direction. It's a symbol. It has, it's like multiplying two numbers together, except this one has has a value of 1. So that everything that's left over is direction. Well, the magnitude of P3, these are x and y components, is 400 squared plus 400 squared. Pull the calculator up real quick. Okay, and then the direction, we know it's in the third quadrant, so it's going to be 180 plus the inverse tan of 400, the y component, it's minus, over the x component, which is negative 400, and that's equal to 225 degrees. Well, I have the momentum here. The question is asking, what is the magnitude and direction of the velocity? Well, to find the uh, magnitude of the velocity, I need to use this relationship. Momentum is mass times velocity. Well, if I want to find the velocity, it's the momentum over the mass. And that's equal to 565 over the mass of 3, which is equal to 188 meters per second in a direction of 225 degrees. So that would be our answer. Okay, so this is in two dimensions, um, and it's not real difficult, um, and when you're working in one dimension, it's even easier. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what's up next for us your free response. This is one dimension, so it should be really pretty straightforward. Remember, conservation of momentum, the mom momentum before is equal to the momentum after. Good luck. We'll see you next time.